Hey everyone, this is Mead here. This is a short digital demo, a quick sketch, if you will, of a little portrait. And it's done using Photoshop uh, with a mouse and keyboard. And I'm doing this just to show you that you can sketch and do digital art with some of the most basic possible tools. Um, you don't need a fancy tablet to, to paint necessarily. And in fact, you know, our hero uh, and the, the sort of grandfather of digital art, Craig Mullins, began doing all of his digital art painting with a mouse. So it's still possible to do that if that's all you have access to. Um, here I'm using this Noton concept where I'm going to use three basic values to block out this figure. So I start with very rough, broad areas, just generally getting the shapes that are in shadow on this figure. Um, nothing super fancy, you know, looking at broad strokes, getting the overall head shape, you know, kind of blocked out, um, making some shape adjustments, you know, using little bits of the eraser tool or white to paint back in, depending, usually just painting back in with white um, for a little sketch like this to, to create a little note on. Um, it doesn't look like much now, but we can uh, develop it further as we go. The way I do notons is a little bit different. I don't use local value in notons very often. Um, I basically create light shadow patterns and then use those as the basis for other things. Um, so basically I created a really quick like black white two-tone noton and so now I need to go in and break this up a little more differentiate shapes. So I'm going to use this uh, this half tone gray somewhere right in the middle um, to kind of keep shifting the the shapes around. And anytime that I miss a shape or need to adjust something, I can. So I hadn't got the bridge of the nose in yet, so I'm headed for that really. One of the cool things about painting with the mouse, if you are using a tablet that's kind of like nice and advantageous. Uh, just to do on occasion is it really, really forces you to think about your your um, paintings and how the shapes work. Um, just because you're using a different interface, it forces your brain to work in a different way. And I feel like sometimes it's very important to, to do that, to shake up what you're doing a little bit and to um, reassess how you're thinking. So what's cool about this is if you paint with the mouse and it changes the way you think. You can bring that thought process back into the way that you that you work normally. Um, and you know what you're always thinking about when you're when you're painting and doing uh, analog or digital work is you're thinking about just differentiating shapes. And the noton I think is such a great way to do that. Um, you know you can quickly block out large shapes and then you can slow down. Um, really take your time getting in smaller shapes and and such working your way back and forth trying to get a fairly accurate block in and the cool thing about you know painting is that it can be a little bit chunky it can be a little bit blocky the edges don't have to be perfect you're just trying to get the essence of whatever it is that you're painting again the the way that the light falls maybe or just a few uh, shapes to define things you know it doesn't have to be the most um, perfect rendered thing every single time. And that's what I like about painting like this is that um, it very quickly gets you the approximate um, shapes that you need to define a portrait. When you zoom out, you know, it should start looking fairly accurate at a certain point when you paid enough attention to the shapes. And for portraits, you know, I'm always paying attention to the overall head shape. I feel like the overall head shape is like the most distinctive way to create an immediate and reasonable likeness. Um, after that, it's, um, you know, it's about the shape of the eyes, nose, lips, and the general way that the forms uh, protrude and go back in space. So we're always trying to go in and, and you know, reobserve and change any of those details that we notice to make the shapes more accurate to the person. You know, the jawline is really important, the way the the overall shape of the hair works. 
those I think are really important. Um, there's certain details that are really kind of key. Um, but one of those things that we always kind of like, you know, forget to integrate early on is the background and, um, you know, using the noton idea, we can basically take the gray of the background and fill that all in. And that gives us a way to differentiate the portrait from the ground. Um, and I think that that's really important. So when you pay attention to these things, um, you start to get really interesting results coming out. Um, sometimes you want to skip around and do different parts. Sometimes you want to just like work on the overall head shape. Sometimes you want to work on the background, then you can immediately skip over to some hair. So what the advantage of skipping around is that it allows you to kind of build up the image as a whole. And when you're doing a sketch, you don't have to take it particularly far. You know, you can just leave it pretty chunky, leave it loose and, you know, shelve it and come back to it later if you feel like finishing it. Um, that's the beauty of doing a lot of sketching. Um, and you know, Photoshop allows you to do many, many sketches and many, many layers um, and to be pretty flexible with the way that you work and the way that you sketch. So I appreciate your time watching this. If you're still watching this, subscribe to the channel. Um, thanks a lot. And uh, I hope you got something out of it. And occasionally I hope you, uh, you know, paint with the mouse in addition to your fancy tablet. Take care and I'll catch you on the next one.